Can I uh, introduce you as as Donnie or uh, Donnie Lurch? Any preference? Donnie Lurch. Welcome to the show, Donnie Lurch. Donnie, Donnie boy. Donnie, Donnie boy, Donnie Lurch. Ah, it's good to be here discussing our favorite person. Yes, our very special little man. When did you first get into Josh? Or oh. Lord, King Cobra JFS. I always use his first name lately, like we're friends yeah. or something. <laughs> it, you do get that kind of parasocial familiarity going on. But uh, I'd say it's probably been three years, maybe four, because I've been working in my current place for five and a half years, and I found him through a coworker that I became good friends with. We were hanging out at his place one time, and I think he just put it on like, hey, you heard of this guy, Gothic King Cobra? I think he might have shown me the hair dye video, some of the, the heavy hitters of the time yeah and at first i didn't quite get it and then one day it just clicked and i started laughing my ass off and like he and i both are into drawing so i'd be drawing in my sketchbook while we're watching king cobra and that's when i did my first drawings of cobra's face that's why i started posting pics on the subreddit he's the one who pointed me there say so the rest is history i got my girlfriend into it last year it's a contagion there's a mention of artwork just earlier you do some absolutely amazing cobra related artwork which mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll have showing in a little gallery here josh and society society tubes it's society tubes we oh. live in one if I i'm gonna get... tell you i'm gonna tell you all about it god if i could get a super cut <laughs> of him saying and that's the problem with our society tubes because <laughs> here's the thing of it <laughs> here's the thing of it he has many qualms with society and it can be any old little thing anything that inconveniences him and that's a problem with our society <laughs> the thing. you know men don't respect women 
but women don't respect me, and that's some fucked up double standards, you two. Double standards with a D E R D S, <laughs> and uh, wanted to explore how how he views society. Obviously, yeah. you know, and then kind of where he fits in. Maybe how society views him. Turn that that high powered perspective back on himself, huh. and uh, and really analyze how society views Josh, where he fits in. Sometimes I wonder. If he realizes and covers it up, or if he's just stuck in his own interpretation of things. He's always going back to that will of like, so a girl can like look at a walk up to a guy, be like, hey sexy, and slap her hand on his bulge and rub his dick through his pants and be like, Damn, I want some of that. But if I look at a girl's boob, suddenly I am a pig. Like he just invents these scenarios that are like based entirely on like loose stereotypes that you might get from media i mean i think in a perfect world these women would be doing these things to him uh <laughs> it's just the fact that women don't want to do that to him uh, <laughs> and in turn he can't stare at boobs at the grocery <laughs> store uh it really bothers him it's so fucking unfair it's so unfair tubes i wish i could see it <laughs> captured when he goes into one of these trances and he's mesmerized by someone he might just be staring at somebody and then goes in the thought, trying to piece something together. He's, he's certainly had some instances where people have told him, hey, please stop staring at me. Yeah. And um, this Asian lady was with her son. She says, in the nicest way possible, please don't stare at me. And I looked at her and I was like, really? I wasn't staring at her either. I wasn't. Oh, it must be really uncomfortable. I I can't imagine uh, what it's like to be on the receiving end of those big old eyeballs looking at you. <laughs> Both aimed in the same direction. Oh, can you imagine if they're actually focusing? You got his eye on you. I mean... You know, it's quick because he's got both of them on you. Do you think it takes courage for him to go out into the wild looking the way he does in his garb, uh, especially in Casper? where there's probably only one of him yeah. looking like that. I mean, it does take a certain amount of courage. Like, uh, I believe him when he says he doesn't care what other people think about him. Yeah. He wears himself on his sleeve, his tattered camo sleeve. Soiled. <laughs> I, I don't know how often he washed his clothes. He'll say he does, but I'm not convinced it often goes beyond the customary uh, scraping of the Bond soap. Well, there's a there's a legendary bottle of uh, detergent that was on his carpet for a really long time. I, I'm going to just oh, yeah. estimate here. I don't know for sure, but at least about a year where this <laughs> this detergent was not moving at all. Decorative detergent. It was uh, just like his vacuum cleaner, where if you picked it up, the, the carpet would be a different color. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he's capable of embarrassment or being embarrassed of mm -hmm. himself? I think so, because like you've talked about on here before, he he kind of puts on this tough guy mask all the time. I feel like he's embarrassed for maybe the wrong things. Like he doesn't care going out looking like a human ashtray, but current recoil at the thought of like appearing soft. Which yeah. probably has something to do with the kind of content he watches, the videos he refers to kind of like to talk about like the new male and the soy boy is this like threat to Western civilization. Or if feel like a lot of that kind of stuff is rubbed off on him, whether he's talked about it or not. Him and masculinity, he's not he's not terribly fixated on being macho. It's a part of him for sure. He uh you know wants to be tough, but part of his double standards, he does get upset that men are not allowed to be emotive or cry as much as women. He's kinda on the other end of that. There's hope for him there. Yeah. It's all over the place, though. He, he can say something like that and then go and say something just really stupid or, or sexist. It's back and forth. I think his heart's in the right place, but he's like easily influenced by like really base, basic rhetoric from people that show you one side of an issue, but doesn't like do the critical thinking to realize that they're kind of manipulating the data to sell a certain agenda. No, no, it's all incredibly base with Joshy Boy. He 
he functions just well enough, and I think he's talked about this before with his Asperger's, that he is not far gone enough where people can recognize that he has an issue and maybe give him a little more leeway. He is just hampered enough to be awkward, and people don't understand why he's so strange. Yeah. Yeah, like, he's fairly competent, but he's just got those little quirks, like, thinking he's a really great singer. Dating scene in Casper sucks. He tried finding a girlfriend with having Asperger's. Some people might be like, well, I don't know, Josh. I know this person who has Asperger's, and they do exceptionally well with the ladies. Uh, that's probably because their fucking autism is so severe you notice it. They're probably so fucking retarded you actually see it. That's why the chicks feel sorry for them. That's what I've noticed. That's what I've fucking noticed. Uh, the only way you pick up chicks when you have a disability is if it's so physical that chicks actually feel sorry for you. It's the fucking truth. Because you ever notice when you go to fucking school and there's always that one kid, he's like super, <laughs> how you doing? He's an awkward guy. We can tell from the footage of him being out and about. He's yeah. he's very strange. But, but that one lady at Buffalo Wild Wings said he looked super cool. Oh, that was so bad. You know, going around town, you know, filming different stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, you look super cool. Good luck. Thanks. Take you care. too. Have a good night. She was trolling him. <laughs> she was trolling him. Oh, she probably was. <laughs> I mean, come I on. wonder how that started. Like, what was going through her head? Like, we just saw her come and be like, "Oh, you're shooting a documentary? Oh, yeah, well, you look super cool." I'm sure she probably knew that he was he was hoping for that, and that he wanted to present himself as this cool guy. Yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, you look great. Uh, this is this is wonderful what you're doing here. Bless your heart. Bless. Yes, that is definitely bless your heart statement for sure. <laughs> That's like a, a a secret of of the South. Or whatever, yeah. you know, it's our little backhanded way of uh, getting at people. As much as I hate about the culture around me, I, I like being privy to such things. Yeah, yeah. Well, th you know, if uh, if someone says that to you, say, hey, hey, you, wait a minute. <laughs> wait How a cotton picking minute you? here. You know, with, with Josh and his accent, his voice has changed significantly over the years. Yeah, you can definitely hear it, like, the way he kind of gets really slow and gravelly, you too. But... There's also a, a kind of a good old boy uh, tone to it that he's been yeah. putting on as well, which I know is fabricated. Yeah, it's got to be, because we've seen him when he was young. With With Josh and how he functions, can you imagine him having a, a can-do attitude, never give up, kind of being this rudy underdog guy with all his ailments and, and handicaps i'd like to think he could but uh, on the path he's been on for the last few years like it seems he's content to fight against that he has a, a lot of coping mechanisms and yeah, ways of, of blaming things and uh, it's always the double standards that are keeping him down and that's right assholes, so that's why none of the hot goth chicks casper won't get on his dick because they don't want to get caught in the crossfire oh sorry just picturing his, <laughs> his dong. I, I've never seen it beyond the green panty videos that he put on YouTube. Uh, it really is a mangled penis. <laughs> it's amazing how vividly it will stay in your memory, too. Yes. There is something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. Have you heard of this before? The name's familiar, but what the hell is it? The idea that people who are really stupid have a huge amount of confidence so it's yeah. it's kind of like Josh is a horrible liar, but yeah. he fully <laughs> believes that people are going to fall for it. Oh, yeah. I've also used my dark powers to take down ISIS, giving energy and aid and magical assistance to people fighting those assholes. And... Uh, during one of Trump's speeches, they were like... They took down the leader of ISIS, and everyone shouted, praise Cobra's magic, and I was like, a what? Okay, that's what's up. Josh, he gets very nervous when he's out and about. He has a touch of the social anxiety. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that drinking has been a big part of that. 
I think he certainly drinks to cope with how nervous he gets. You know, when he has his friends over, he seems to get nervous. When they're talking at him and they're around, he kind of has his tics and phrases that he relies on to just kind of fill the air. Drafted one, can't wait to use it, that's what's up. Aww, uh, dude, dude, bro hot ring touch, boo! Hell yeah. You are most welcome. It's still got the red on it from it. But I think he certainly drinks to feel more comfortable with them. Could Josh ever wind up in prison? I wonder, I mean, he doesn't seem to do illegal things. Just embarrassing things. He has had his run-in with the cops, where fortunately he wasn't gunned down. I think uh, he could be framed for something very easily. Yeah. It goes along the lines yeah. of, and this would be very malicious trolling on par with uh, swatting him, but I think that Josh could be convinced with time uh, if someone was turning 18 in six months or something that uh, he could be convinced to send dick pics. Yeah. Um, It'd be smart he wouldn't do that, but I could yeah. see him at least like becoming their friend and getting in their good graces and being like, I can't do anything till you're of age, but I like you. Like, come on, I'll, I'll show you my giant goth boobs if you <laughs> send me something. I, I think he would uh, cave in. I think he'd be tempted for sure. I wonder if one of his uh, goons, one of his friends, or uh, vagrants that he pulls in would call Crime Stoppers or something for a little bit of cash. Say, hey, this guy has uh, some weed in his drawer or something. Go get him. I wonder. Like, he hangs out with some skeevy individuals. It's more framing. Yeah, definitely. Like, or set up or yeah. sold out somebody for some innocuous shit that yeah. nonetheless would be illegal. I don't, they'd have to have something to gain from it, I hope, but like, the kind of characters he hangs out with. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them just sold him up the river for a fucking hit. Or yeah. Something. I think um, if he drove, I'm pretty sure he would have gotten a DUI pretty easy. Like he's, he's plenty dumb enough to be convinced that he could still drive after, you know, drinking at the sandbar or something. I could see that. Definitely. I've known people who have driven when they really should not have. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm trying to think of how else he could wind up in prison. I don't think he would ever get into a violent altercation with somebody because he's too timid in person to actually fight anyone. He loves to talk about how he'll call the cops if you hit him because it's legal to hit an autistic person. Yeah, he's he's more uh, how tough he is. He's more concerned with putting you in jail for uh, for hitting an autistic. Yeah, I wonder if he'd really try that or if he'd push out of that. I think like if someone like intimidated him. Man, I doubt he would go for it. He loves to talk about it, but maybe there's some part of him that understands that it would be really hard to actually convict somebody. Yeah. And then you're on the shit list of Casper, which is a small ass town where everything gets around. So That's right. He's a snitch. You really want to go down that road? Yeah. Growing up and and going to school, do you think that he should have been quote mainstreamed? where they get to go to school like an ordinary person or yeah. do you think he would have benefited from maybe the separate classes that they have or just more guidance a counselor person i'm not sure what exactly they do but more intervention i don't know what he was like back then if he acted out a lot so i don't know if josh was like flipping out on people no, i think he probably could have made it in general i mean he i guess gen pop is what he was i sort of wish he acted out just enough to get a little more guidance. He just kind of went through the system. I'm sure someone passed yeah. him at some point just to get him out of school. Because this guy, I think under normal circumstances, would never have uh, graduated high school. Yeah, cause at least considering his like spelling ability, I wonder about that. Wouldn't have passed English. I think he was like the benefactor slash victim of an uncaring teacher. It was like, just get this guy out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Someone... Wanted to pass him along. I, I want to know more about it. I feel like there is something we don't know about yes. him and graduating high school. It's a big, dark unknown in the history of Cobra. Something he, he won't talk about and Clint won't share. Uh, it, it, there could be a twist where he never actually graduated. Oh, shit. It's Wouldn't that be dramatic? Completely possible. I don't know for sure what the actual status is. I wonder, has he ever like said anything really ignorant about other countries or other states? He 
man, I'm really thinking hard here. I don't know how often he has ever mentioned other countries and other cultures. Can you imagine him talking about Japan or <laughs> what it's like to live over there? Anything about their culture and what they eat? God, I'm just thinking about him like falling down the incel rabbit hole and talking about how like Asian women are all submissive and the ideal mate for the, the true male who's not afraid to own his household and all that shit they talk about. Maybe one day he'll he'll get his hands on that. I think there's a lot of things he would love to embrace, but he has not stumbled upon it yet because he does barely any research on his own yeah. and isn't receptive to being pointed towards things. Man, Asian women oh, and Josh. Oh, that I would, could be a thing for him. I would love it if he became obsessed with having an Asian <laughs> wife. That would be so that. good. I'm sorry, I keep imagining him now with a, with a nice Asian lady. It's a really weird thing to be fixated on, but it's it's so absurd and, and just impossible. A little Asian girlfriend hanging out with him. I imagine it's like the white majority is more overwhelmingly the majority there than most places. But yeah. I've looked at their statistics to say for sure. Oh, if only. A cute Asian goth GF who <laughs> is, is in Japan or something. And suddenly he is completely obsessed with the culture, all because there's this, you know, girlfriend out there. It's, he goes through his early 2000s weeb face. What would you say the perfect job would be for Josh? No, we know he has a lot of experience working in the kitchen, washing dishes, but I, I want to give him a little more credit. Maybe he could work at Guitar Center if he doesn't have a passion for music. If he could be taught the specifications of, of certain guitars and how to repair them. What is he really good at? And he loves his one business. Maybe he could work at like a, mm. a new agey crystal shop, like the one he gets his crystals from. That's a good if point. If there's another one that would hire him, because they seem like they weren't too keen on being associated with him in the documentary. He really likes paranormal things. He likes his Ouija boards and... Uh... Two. crystals and wands maybe something akin to a, a hot topic some kind of yeah. goth store where he can hang out and even then he, he could look really freaking weird and they wouldn't yeah. mind maybe like a like in my town we've got like a vintage clothing store where they basically like get old clothes from donations or they go to thrift stores and pick out the best stuff and then sell it for way more money he would definitely fit in at a place like that if yeah. he could find one that like liked him enough to want to bring him on as one of the staff. He'd be right at home. I think uh, some something like a Hot Topic, some retail place that, that is supposed to be for counterculture, I think he would fit in there. I don't know what they do exactly, stand around. What would be the best and worst place for Josh to live in the U.S.? Hmm. I wonder how he would do in New York City. That'd be crazy. Oh. It's it's crazy. It's like you can just hide in plain sight there, I guess. Like, the cops got better things to do, or it's just the sheer volume of how many people are around. Like, I hear stories from comedians all the time about the weird shit that just happens on New York City streets. and Nobody pays attention to it, because you just keep your eyes forward and go about your day. Do you think that he would be scared of a really densely populated city? I think so. Since he's grown up and spent his whole life in a small town, like he's definitely used to that vibe. It's, it is like a whole other world in New York, and yes. I can't imagine like L.A. if he can even afford to live there. Maybe as a homeless person. Yeah, and, you know, bum around San Francisco and pick up some food with his uh, sig butts. At least he's used to not driving, so he might have an advantage there, like a freewheeling, uh, free soul <laughs> like Josh, and then bad boy, gothic stud, cowboy yeah, he might from get hell. Easier. If you can afford to live anywhere. Would that be your, your best place you can imagine him living or I could see him living in Colorado. Like I oh, think he'd want to go yeah. there. If only for the weed, but also you know, it's kind of a, there are a lot of towns that are similar. I think he would like it in Colorado because it he would need it to be somewhere kind of remote, like Casper. The the drug aspect of it would make him very happy. He could live in a lot of places in the US because of his guaranteed basic income i don't know if they adjust it if you are somewhere really expensive so that you can have some place to live but as long as it's somewhere cheap i guess he could have a place to live yeah i think you definitely have to live someplace fairly rural worldwide 
worst place that he could live. I wonder if he could be like coerced into enjoying the misogynistic theocracy of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Somewhere where all the women have to cover up. Yeah, and he can't. He can't be prone to staring at them because <laughs> they're they're decent all the time. But he also hates the sky god, so I don't think he would like living in a theocracy overall. Yeah, yeah, he does not right. like. He fuck your sky god. He hates Christianity yes. or or any yeah. kind of uh you know conventional religion. Really seems to irk him. Yeah, maybe he could get along in like Norway. If they would take him, like I've heard some of those like nicer places to live in Europe that are really small, have very strict standards for immigration because mm. they can only have so much people. So I like to imagine Josh, again, he's got an Asian GF over there who's in love with him uh, and he wants to live with her. He forfeits his U.S. citizenship, mm. goes and lives in Japan. I imagine that'd probably be one of the worst places for him to exist. They don't like foreigners. Yeah, it can be rough. It's, I wouldn't say it's not that they don't like them, but they are ninety nine percent Japanese over there, and that if I stick out. Yeah, I mean, you stick out. A lot of the yakuza are the remaining one percent that aren't Japanese because they don't fit in anywhere. Oh, they, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yakuza. I they're like very exclusively Japanese. Oh no, no, a lot of them are uh, Koreans. They would, they would hate Josh. He yeah, would, he would break all the rules. They have very, very strict rules oh, yeah. on how you're meant to behave. If you don't follow societal norms over there in public, they're very uh, community conscious, social structure, whatever you want to call it. They'll get very upset with you. What would be King Cobra's dream uh, place hmm. to live in? Well, he would definitely have a mansion with a clock tower. I think it would probably be, well, I was going to say it'd be dead center, but as he's described it, he's always talked about how he would live on the outskirts of town. The, the city would exist in one shape or form, but he would not be dead center. Yeah, he'd have like a big gothic mansion on the outskirts of town with a big scary broad iron fence. And bells. All the kids would oh yeah, he'd have a Constantly. clock tower. I like to imagine that it's just nonstop bells. There's no rhyme <laughs> or reason or timing for it. He's just constantly banging bells all day long. Do you think his perfect city would just be the setting of the crow where it's it's raining constantly and it's really dark probably <laughs> hopefully he doesn't get shot with a gun do you think uh he would impose any rules on people well he's talked before about like banning relationships oh, i wonder yeah. if he would really do that if he had the power because he's also like talked about oh that was an overreaction a couple's concentration camps <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I listened to that one recently. I don't remember where it was from, though. What was he getting at? What was he trying to communicate exactly? He was trying to say, like, it sucks that I'm single and I can't get a girlfriend, <laughs> so I will put couples in concentration camps so that no one can have the joy that I can't have. <laughs> it's a damn good thing I'm not in charge of things or things would be different. I make having relationships illegal. And force everyone to be asexual and masturbate only, and that's it. They can't do it in front of each other. They can't do it to each other. And if <laughs> they broke law, they get like 40 years in prison. Fuck it. We're putting cameras in people's houses, making sure they're not trying anything funny. Like, you are caught fornicating. That's 40 years in prison. Fuck concentration camps. That's a little too far. I mean, it'd be fun watching those people suffer for their indecency, but that's a little too far. I love the idea of his fictional city. That's something that <laughs> I really wanted. If if I had just had the time, and I know it's not supposed to be that hard, but if I knew RPG Maker really well, I would be super into this idea of this uh, of Casper turning into what he would want um, unintentionally. Do you think Josh is a bit of an exhibitionist? I'd say definitely. I mean, he put on those green panties with a raging boner. I thought yeah. he could convince people. But that was just... Did, did he really think he could just convince people that he didn't have an erection? That was just what his dick looks like? Yep. yep. So that you can imagine it gets even bigger when he gets hard. It's the, the Dunning-Kruger effect. There have actually been kids here, Gasper, that have been buying, selling, smoking dehydrated bed bugs 
I don't know if he would ever take that outside into the open. If he were to go swimming or something, do you think he'd wear a, a little Speedo? Like, has he ever gone swimming? <laughs> Can he <laughs> swim? Yeah, it, it seems like an activity he would probably be into because he kind of likes that rural small town activity stuff, but he never talks about it. I would love to see him fresh out the water. <laughs> I want to know what he wears. Yeah. Or trunks or briefs. See that skullet emerging from a body of water, just <laughs> clinging to him, all that hair. Does he try desperately to skinny dip with girls at any given opportunity? Oh, he would love that. He, he would. would but he'd be brave enough to, to suggest oh, it. With enough alcohol. Could you see Josh joining a boxing club? He loves to brag about his muscles. I'd love to see him commit to like actual physical hobbies. Like you said, he's into the perception of fitness. Yeah. And to mix that with having some friendship and good influences. And, you know, he's an angry guy. I think it would probably be beneficial having a boxing club or, or you know, some kind of gym thing. I think he'd get out of breath pretty fast. Yeah, probably from smoking. Yeah. It's... I wonder if it would help him like counteract that. Oh, yeah. Because learn to control his breathing better. I would imagine so. When he got really, really drunk with uh, Darth Lenny and passed out, it was kind of spooky how much he was wheezing and coughing and like turning blue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it was not a good look, and I just wonder yeah. how often that happens to him. Aside from the genuine concern for his well-being, that was pretty funny, though, when his hat flipped over. <laughs> I can't say I wasn't a little concerned for him watching the footage if I didn't go in knowing that he survived. I'm not against Josh having a real life redemption arc. Like, oh. I love to, to have a laugh at his misadventures, but I don't want to see someone fail. I just kind of want to be there if they fail in an entertaining way. It would be amazing. I mean, can you imagine the stories he would have if he joined a boxing gym? Oh, yeah. People hitting him in his nuts. <laughs> Gotta hit him with a folding chair. I mean, it could happen all over again. Easy. I wonder what kind of characters he would meet there if he makes oh. a new home voice. <laughs> Him and Darflin, he should join one. It'd be so good. <laughs> Great. They could oh. vlog it, make content out of it. That would be amazing. That'd probably be the best way to motivate him, to tell him, like, hey, you could like get a lot of views and make some money if you started vlogging trips to the gym or something. Yeah. Man, the journey. That would be an incredible journey. And, I mean, the what, the biggest thing I envy with josh is how much damn time he has there's a lot of people i'm sure that would love to get in shape and go on a fitness journey joining a, a boxing gym or any other kind of gym they could do yeah. mma or something and because they can go whenever they want you know or they, they would be able to they could get fit and, and and benefit from it but normal humans have to work so much oh yeah that there's not enough hours in the day to go do something like that. Yeah, something like that would be good. A, uh, any kind of... Uh, I don't know if he could do mixed martial arts or something. I'd, I'd be kind of nervous if Josh did something like that. I just keep thinking about boxing <laughs> for some reason. I think that would be perfect. Teeth kicked in. Oh, well, I mean, good. There would be a free extraction if, if he got his <laughs> yeah, teeth punched yeah. out. He'd have an excuse. He could say, yeah, I don't have teeth because, you know, I did too much boxing. They got knocked yeah. out of my head. Uh, and I have these sweet dentures, but it's because I'm a sportsman. That's all. Yeah. It isn't going much better than what he is now. <laughs> it's so funny. Is there another time that you think Josh could have existed in and been happy or fit in better? Like maybe, maybe if he was this age in the late seventies, he could have gotten into the punk scene. He's yeah. a little bit really goth. Like, um, anything counterculture. And and yeah. using drugs. Yeah, there was a uh, lot of drugs in the punk scene. He would have been a good beatnik. Uh, yeah. 
just a counterculture, hippie culture, smoking pot. He probably would have done some heavier stuff like LSD. Hopefully, if he was in the punk scene in the 70s, he wouldn't be into heroin. Do you think Josh would have been a good peasant? Oh, like a serf under yeah. a king or a lord? Yeah. Funny to imagine. Work the land. Just, just be a peasant somewhere and uh, do what needs doing. Believe in some, uh, he'd have some cult or some weird god he would pray like, to. Oh my god, imagine, I mean, he had his covert religion thing when he was like, <laughs> younger. He seems to have kind of mellowed out on that. But Yeah, he's calmed down, he's unfortunately. Trying to become like a cult leader or something in a time where he's more permitted to do so. Cult leader, or just, just be content praying to some strange god. Yeah. Some weird <laughs> thing. Depending on the time and place, he might have to hide it so he doesn't get burned at the stake. Could have been like a druid or something. A druid. Him and warlord. He made actual magic staffs. No Christianity allowed. He would reject that. Could have been one of the first European defenders of paganism that just like, I don't know what they did to Christians, but it probably wasn't very good. Be a bard. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of why I thought that'd be a great role for him. You know, we talked about it earlier. I got really stuck on it, but the Asian Asian GF. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think of arranged marriages. If he could yeah. somehow benefit from that, and how how right. rough it would be for <laughs> for the person, you'd have to get roped into it. Oh my god, you'd have to bring something at a table. Uh, I don't know how much, I don't know how people get out of bad arranged marriages. I love the idea of an alternate universe where that's a thing in the States or or somehow Josh has just popped in there where, you know, because there's some kind of dowry or exchange that takes place. And uh, the bargaining chip there, you know, you got Josh. He's, um, he's a shut-in and he uh, doesn't make a lot of money. Uh, what, what are you going to give me uh, in return? Or, or what would Clint have to fork over? My son will... Make you the finest handcrafted wand oh. with the purest quartz crystal and copper wire. <laughs> I think this marriage. I think Clint would have to sell off the rights to uh, some of his works or something <laughs> to uh, to get that going. Who would usually pay the dowry in these situations? I'm not sure. I've, I never looked too much into that. It's um, it's meant to be beneficial for both parties right where where it's kind of um it's a strategic union Inega.com says bride wealth is often one part of a reciprocal exchange in which case it is accompanied by the provision of a dowry a payment presented by the bride's family to that of the groom one of his big titty goth gf's family has to pay clint <laughs> i i just don't think it would happen because you know the 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 bride's family has to benefit somehow yeah in order to form the union so they you know they they make their offering but in the end they're they're meant to benefit uh, he would have to have a job in a canning factory or something yeah some kind of notoriety oh man. If, if, maybe if he was known for his music or his one crafting or <laughs> something i like how even in an alternate universe where we have arranged marriages uh he is still struggling <laughs> <laughs> Clint's going to be like, you don't understand. My son tells it like it is. He has guaranteed income. That's about it. Yeah, he's got that. If it's if he's still got that in that world. A loose uh, promise of stability for the rest of your days. A, a, a pittance every month, guaranteed. Yeah. Double standards, gun violence, masculinity. He doesn't like it. Girl drinks. He doesn't like that he can't drink girl drinks. He can't That's quaff a, a blue raz. Or so he thinks, perhaps. Yeah. A lot of it's just his perception of society, going back to like his double standards. Like so much of what he talks about over and over when he complains about what he can't do because he's a man is just like really weird stereotypes from TV. Is he really going to go to the bar, order a mojito, and some Casper dickhead is going to be like, pussy? That's a gay drink. Ha <laughs> ha. For someone so sensitive about all that and, and what a, a manly drink is, I'm surprised he wouldn't be more embarrassed that he mixes freaking Mountain Dew with beer to be able oh, to drink yeah. it. Oh, fuck. I tried that recently. Really? Yeah, I made some Cobra's Mist. It is, it, like? it is not good. It, it felt like I was wasting a blue moon. Is there an aspect of Josh that you see in yourself that you can relate to? Oh, boy. I don't want to like self-diagnose myself, but I've identified some 
questionably autistic traits in myself over the years as I've gotten more and more reflective. I've, I'm definitely uh, can be awkward in social situations with new people. I can be I can overthink how people are going to feel about me, and that can affect what I say, how I behave. So I can definitely see that in Josh, uh, that little bit of insecurity and uncertainty. Mm. Do you struggle with certain social norms or, or knowing uh, which rules to follow or, or which apply? I'd say I'm better than Josh on that front with like the appropriateness of uh, dump etiquette. But I think maybe sometimes I can do that thing where uh, you might go on a little too long about a very specific topic with someone who might not give a shit. I think we're but all guilty of that sometimes. I, I'm I'm definitely self aware enough that like I kind of realize I'm doing it in the middle, but it's I'm too deep in it to Can't just stop. abruptly stop. Yeah. So I find a way to navigate myself to a succinct conclusion. That's fair. I'd say if I am autistic, I'm I'm definitely higher functioning than the less fortunate. But like, I don't. Know if sometimes I wonder. Like I've watched people on YouTube talk about it, who are like open about self-diagnosis because they feel like sometimes the uh, the system for medical diagnosis the dms iv or, or whatever yeah, it is yeah it's, it's apparently fairly controversial in some corners of the autistic community that some people don't feel it catches everybody or it doesn't accurately uh portray everyone i'd like to get that looked at by a professional to find out you know yeah um, but I feel like it would explain a lot of things about myself. It's a, it's a great big spectrum. But it's interesting. Sure. You can kind of see these things and, and uh, wonder. I mean, I've definitely had times in my life where I might have shared more information than I need to with somebody. Not to the extent that Cobra has, but he, he kind of looks like an extreme reflection of all these kinds of behaviors. Uh, what have you seen yourself in uh, Cobra? Oh, man. I really love caffeine. He used to be crazy for it. I had that in common. I think I like to chase dopamine where I can, and he yeah. does as well. So yeah. that can partake. I mean, I, I play a lot of games, and I drink a lot of, of caffeine because it makes me feel good. I think um, yeah. I have a bit of an addictive personality. I think I have that in common with him. I love playing craps so much and i always have dreams because every time i've gone i've done really well made a lot of money and i think my my brain is still wanting that high again so I, I have dreams about it and i just can't be satisfied until i go back and finally lose a lot of money i can get a real powerful pizza craving sometimes so. oh yeah <laughs> i can't blame him for that but i'm a little better about how much i spend on it when i decide to give in it it sucks to turn 30. unfortunately one of those big milestone years where if you haven't achieved a lot of things, it can be very depressing. I think I've done enough. <laughs> uh, I don't want to like put Josh down, but yeah. I think I'm in a better position economically, relationship and friend-wise and everything than he'll be in a couple years when he's 30. He is going to be one cranky cobra. He is certainly aware you're meant to have done certain things by a certain age. I mean, it seems like on his birthday, he'll be very angry. I don't think that's coming from nowhere. There should be a, a bite-sized video for his birthday stream somewhere, and he's just pissed off. Really? Son of a bitch! I'm so tired of spilling my fucking beer! It's bullshit! Shit pisses me off! I gotta set the can down on the desk and bring up no bullshit. Yeah, happy fucking birthday to this fucking retard. Let's go ahead and spill our fucking beer all over the floor like a fucking stupid retard. He's got to know. He has to know. He like desperately needs to get his act together. He may understand he's supposed to get his act together, but just that as you get older, normally certain things have have come to pass, and he's still living like a teenager. I think that bothers him because it doesn't get any easier. Uh, you, yeah. just, you get older and uh, stuff gets harder. It definitely feels like the situation that I'm waxing nostalgic for at this age when I was in my late teens, early 20s, and going to my one friend's house where the downstairs area was there was a bathroom with this toilet that was just like a terrarium. <laughs> it was just full, impacted with like puke and shit layers. I don't know how the fuck it got that way. Would it, it, did it still like, work or? No, like the, the bowl was full of just like dried shit. Well, uh, 
think uh, I think that'll do it. It's been a blast and a half, muchacho. Oh, muchos gracias.